Hi, and welcome to AP European History. Today we're going to take a look at the Second Industrial Revolution. Now, the First Industrial Revolution really brought us the factories, and we're going to talk a little bit about that just to review. But the Second Industrial Revolution brings us to a real turning point in the history of Europe. Prior to this point, it was the rich, it was the wealthy, it was the well-born who really had everything. But now, entering into the late 19th century, we enter a point where most Europeans, or at least many Europeans, are going to benefit from industrialization. They're going to have more to buy. They're going to have more to spend. They're going to have more leisure time. So lots of these things are what we're going to look at. And in order to do that, we kind of have to divide things up a little bit into a few different segments. So today's video is going to take a look at the new inventions of the Second Industrial Revolution. It's going to look at some of the trade that goes on and what countries do in the wake of all of this. And it's going to look at the role of women a little bit. So sit back, relax, and enjoy as we look at the Second Industrial Revolution. Some people call this the age of progress. And really what they say is that technology that's developed at this time drives a new society in Europe. And that society is really characterized by a belief in the idea that Europe is consistently moving forward. That with every new technological innovation, that they're advancing towards a more perfect society. And it's that belief in progress that drives this entire period. Make things clear, Europe goes through two industrial revolutions. The first, in the early 1800s, is characterized by textiles, railroads, iron, and coal and steam power to get the whole thing going. Now the second industrial revolution is going to rely on things like steel production. Steel production is really pushed by the Germans, and by 1910 they're actually outproducing British production altogether. It's also characterized by chemistry, so that chemicals are being produced for all kinds of different uses. So why is it that Germany is able to outpace Britain? Well, here's the deal. Britain had really been on the forefront of the first industrial revolution, and they would put all of their technology and all of their money and all of their investment into those technologies. Germany's starting off a little bit behind, and so they're able to invest easier in the new technologies. You know, it's hard to teach an old dog new tricks. And you might notice that people who tend to be older, or countries that tend to be older, tend to be a little more stuck in their ways. And it's the younger, newer ones that drive innovation. That's what happened here. So to get back to our story, by the late 1870s, electricity was now being available. Electricity, we have to sit back and think about this for a second, because before this, the only way to light the night for the whole of human history was fire. And now electricity brings all kinds of new things. The light bulb changes the way that we view the night. The telephone improves communication person to person. Radio is invented, allowing us to communicate to large groups of people. And we start to see the rise of electric railroads, streetcars, subways, trolleys, all those kinds of things. They all come from electricity. It also happened to make factory work a whole lot easier. And it gave the advantage so that those countries that didn't have coal deposits were now able to industrialize. So everyone could do it. And of course, we come with the internal combustion engine, which starts the car movement. Initially for the very rich, but as we know from American history, made for everybody by Henry Ford. So those are the major new technological innovations of the Second Industrial Revolution. Now we gotta take a look at how they affect the economy how they affect the markets in Europe, how they affect the people in Europe, and how they affect the women in Europe. So as these countries in Europe are starting to industrialize, they try to protect their own markets inside their own countries by setting up protective tariffs. In other words, they tax all the goods coming from other countries. That leads to all kinds of problems. But eventually, where this is going to go is the creation of a global economy here. And this is something we still talk about today. Global leaders today come together to talk about the impact of things on the global economy. And it's actually happening here. So by the late 19th century, we see a real divide between the East and the West in Europe. 
Western Europe is industrialized. They have big cities and lots of factories and lots of things being made. Whereas Eastern Europe and Southern Europe are still more agricultural and they rely on growing products, mostly food items, in order to create their economy. Now this is going to be huge, not just in the developments of the country, but also in their ability to compete when it comes to business. And finally in this video, we're going to talk about women. Now women have new opportunities in the workplace here too. They work as telephone operators, they work as teachers. Now unfortunately what happens is that jobs like this get the stigma of being women's work. So men shy away from them for quite a long time. For many lower class women who can't get those kinds of jobs, the only thing they have open to them is prostitution. Now this is often licensed or regulated by the countries, but it can lead to a lot of problems. The most notorious situation is of course the horrific murders of Jack the Ripper that happened in 1888. But look, the story of Jack the Ripper is a whole different story that could take an entire film or two or three depending how deeply we wanted to get into it. There's tons of stuff out there about this really ghastly series of murders. But what I wanted to get across to you today is some of the major changes that happened in the late 19th century in Europe. And I hope you've gotten that. Now, next time, we're going to take a look at how workers respond to all these changes. So I hope you tune in for that. Until then, I hope you enjoyed this. Please subscribe to these videos and keep tuning in. Till next time, I'm Paul Sargent. Have a great day.